Amen. And good morning to all of you here at Shady Grove. And all of you be tuning in with us uh, by way of internet. Hope you've had a wonderful uh, week. And what a beautiful day the Lord's made. Trees have got some buds on them. The flowers are out. Um, I've got a card I need to read to you or read this morning. Um, in memory of Herman and Irene and Larry Chambers. Um, That's what this is for us. So, uh, they've sent a donation to... Shady Grove Cemetery Fund, and um, well, well, we'll handle that in just a minute, okay? So I'll, I'll give that to the necessary people in just a few moments, but again, it's good to see all of you here. Uh, praise the Lord for it. Glad you can come and be with us, and I hope that you spent some time with the Lord before you came, and just ready to worship Him in spirit and truth, okay? Uh, Miss Nancy Jane Chambers has fell on us this past week. Uh, fell down, that is, and uh, she's beat up a little bit. Nothing broke, bruised, and um, not really feeling good. Um, says her hips bothering her. what Brother Glenn and Miss Betty told me this morning. So continue to pray for her. Um, if you didn't know that, Brother Paul Wells with us this morning. It's been four weeks since his surgery on his eye, and he said that his vision is coming back from the top down. So that's, that's good to hear. Now, he's healed good, but his vision is what we're concerned with, okay? So pray for Brother Paul and him. And Brother Junior Inchworth, he's with us here today. He says he's doing good, feeling good. Um, so he's still on the men just well, okay? And then Brother uh, Claude Gregory, uh, don't forget him. And uh, Haley uh, McManus, uh, Miss Carrie Wells, uh, Privet, don't forget her this morning. <laughs> um, so I know many of you have many prayer requests. If you'd like to make them known or share them with me, um, and when you see me or... Uh, text me or ever have what you want to do with there, okay? So that's uh, those are our prayer requests this morning. I know we've got many others. Don't forget the loss. I'm glad to see you today, and then I'm glad to hear from you, okay? So April 21st, um, we're going to try our best to go inside on Wednesday night, uh, 7 p.m., and uh, so you come be with us. Um, I'm going to put it to you like this. We're all adults, and I'm going to, at least says easiest minute, we'll have um, some hand sanitizer at each exit. Um, if you want to wear a mask, you're welcome to. Um, if you want to, how you see it, it's going to be up to you. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how or what. Um, so if you shake hands, that will be up to you. Uh, okay? Um, so I'm going to leave it like that for now. Okay? So April 21st, please be much in prayer about that. Um, it's a Wednesday night. We'll be start having services back inside the sanctuary at 7 p.m. Uh, come and be with us. We'd love for you too. Most of all, pray for us, okay? Pray for the services today. Miss Judy, she's going to be singing for us here in just a few moments. We're excited about that. And then, Lord willing, God will give us the message today. And I pray and hope it'll be a blessing to you and your heart today, okay? So I think that's everything that I'm supposed to mention this morning. And she's making her way. I appreciate that. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now. And then we'll jump right into our service today, okay? She'll sing and then we'll try to preach. So you pray for us all today, okay? Almighty God, we do love you. Thank you, God, for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for your help. God, thank you for your strength. Lord, thank you that you know everything and that you're in control and that, that it's not left up to us. We're just left to trust and believe and have faith in you. Lord, you tell us without faith it's impossible to please God. And Lord, I pray you'd help us today that we would trust in you, Lord, for the things we don't know, for the things we think we do know. And give it all to you, Lord. Allow you to have it. Lord, you tell us that, uh, to honor you, to acknowledge you. And you would direct our paths. And we're counting on that today. Lord, please raise a hedge around our hearts, around our minds, and around this sanctuary today, outside, inside. Lord, I pray you bind and fear the devil. Lord, remove all hindrances from any of us. Help us lay aside every sin and weight. God wished us so easily to set us. Lord, let us run the race you set before us. Lord, this morning, may we worship you. That when we leave this church service today, we'll say it's been good to be here. Because we've made things right. We've laid things down. we picked some up, some good things up. To honor you with. We need you today. Touch Miss Judy. Lord, touch her voice and help her to sing the very best she can. Lord, for all we know, this is our last time. We have no promise of tomorrow. For these things, dear Lord, we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Miss Judy.
appreciate all the help that I can get, especially when it comes to singing, um, but I appreciate Miss Judy and Miss Tana and all of you that's helped us in that fashion um, while doing this. hope you brought your Bibles with you today, and it is a little windy, but it's all right. Second um, Timothy, I'll step back one, see if that helped me. Second Timothy this morning is where we're going to be, Second Timothy chapter uh, number one. If you brought your Bibles, you can turn with us there. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 9. We're going to read down to verse number 14. Just a few verses, okay? And then I'll um, share with you uh, as the Lord's laid on our heart today, okay? 2 Timothy chapter number 9. <laughs> 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, okay? That's where we'll be. It says this, Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling? Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Well, that says it all. But that's a whole, that's a lot to be said in a few few verses there, a few words there. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and given, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to the light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I suffer the things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words, which, which thou hast heard of me, and faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Now listen, verse 14. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth 
in us. Okay? So now let's bow and ask God's blessing upon the reading of this word and this message today. Okay? Almighty God, we do thank you again for allowing us to come to your house, allowing us, God, to share your word, to preach the gospel, Lord, to this congregation, to anybody today. Lord, just glorify you, Lord, on this first day of the week to worship you. And Father, I pray that's what we'll truly do. Lord, by sharing your word, we'd worship. Lord, by acting uh, the way you'd be pleased, we'd worship you today, that it would show that, Father. And I pray, God, you'd help us, uh, each of us Christians, to give a place in our hearts that we can learn more about you, be reminded more about you, and God, that it would just open our eyes. Lord, I pray for those that have never accepted you as their Savior. Lord, today that it be the day. Lord, that they would make a decision for Christ for you today, Lord. Uh, before the, uh, We'd have no promise of our for it's eternally too late. God, we need you today. Lord, you said that you came to give us life, and Lord, you have. But Lord, more abundantly, and Lord, that's through accepting you as our Savior. Lord, I pray you'd help us today. Give us your words. And Lord, bless us by being here and encourage us. Lord, convict us also to show us what we need to get rid of. To show us what we need to lay down. Lord, that we can uh, be men and women, God, that you would be happy with. God, we love you today. Forgive us where we fail you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen and amen. You know, there's a whole lot to say about this passage or just these few verses that I've read to you with not even just taking it in literal terms. Just exactly what it says. And there's a lot I want to say, but today I want to share what God has laid on my heart this morning and not just what I want to say. I don't want to get on my soapbox. I want to preach God's word and as he has given it to me. So today I want to give you the title of this message. Let's just be a blessing. Let's just be a blessing. Now today, uh, this is for the saved and the lost. I want every message to do my best. Every message and each message be for the saved and for the lost today. Uh, but this morning I want to share with you Christian people uh, that it's time that we just, we just want to be a blessing. Whatever it is that we do, uh, whatever it is, wherever it is that we go, whatever it is that God have us to say, uh, whatever, uh, whether it be a hobby, whether it's uh, uh, just for fun, if it's uh, where, at the ball field, I care wherever we're at, that we just be a blessing for God, for His honor. We'll just deal with this, okay? All right, it's landed. All right, and so have I. All right. Just, we're all good. All right. Nobody's hurt and everything else. I knew this is the way it was going to go this morning. Um, but God will prevail. Let, listen to me today. Let's just be a blessing. Okay? For us Christian people that know, that have accepted Christ and know Jesus as our personal Savior, that have accepted Him, and that I know that our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Let's just be a blessing to us. Let's help others, and let's not take the thought that God, what God has shared with us, let's not, let's not be prideful in that. That you think that we, we might think that we might know something, because you know what it is? It's just the blessing that we do know the truth. The blessing is that we're saved. That's the blessing behind it, that we have accepted Jesus our Savior. Our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now listen, this is the reason I'm sharing this with you, and the reason why it's so important to me that I express this point, it's because I want to say, I want to say, I wanted to say that so I can tell you this, Miss Annie. For many Romans, even. Clay, they ain't one thing that I could do on this earth that would merit one second of me going to heaven. You hear me today? They ain't one, there's not one good work that I could do that would merit me to go to heaven. Not one good work of myself. For by grace are you saved. Are you with me today? And not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. I want you to hear me clearly today. It's not about what I can do. It's not about what I can say. It's not about how I can help today. Our righteousness, my righteousness, is as filthy rags in the sight of Jesus. I'm not here to beat you up. I'm not here to make you feel bad about yourself or what you can or can't do. But it's not about any of that. It's about being a blessing today. The reason that we get to go to heaven is because God gave His Son and Jesus gave His life and you've accepted that. That is what gets you into heaven. That is what merits you to be able to go. That Jesus died, you've accepted it, and He washed your sins away. Not one, se not one second, not one millisecond, not whatever how you, a frame of a moment, 
in your life of any good work that you could ever do would merit a half a second in God's presence or his heaven that he's created for us. He told Nicodemus, simply, you must be born again. You must accept him as your Savior. The believe that he died on the cross for your sins. That God gave his son and Jesus gave his life. So what is the purpose for us to be here? What is it? So that's why this is the direction I'm headed in. And it will go fast after this. Now listen to me today. Say, now we just read a passage and I love it. And I'm interested in, in preaching all different kinds of things today. But listen, it says, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works? It's got nothing to do with us. But he beckoned your heart to be saved. He called you to be saved. You with me? He, 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 he weighed on your heart. He convicted you in such a fashion, showed you who you was, and that you were in need of a Savior, that you could go to heaven if you accepted him. And he called you for that purpose. But then it goes on to talk about the apostle, or Timothy and Paul here, uh, talking amongst one another about a holy calling, according to our, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. He's got a purpose for you today. Each and every one of you. According to his purpose and grace for you, which was given unto us through Christ Jesus before the world began. He was thinking about you. And this is the scripture that says it today. He's thinking about you. And he wants you today. He tells us in that, that very verse that he's got a purpose for you today. If you've accepted him today. It does, now listen, did that, did that verse have anything to say about your age? Did it clarify abilities? What you, how big you are, how tall you are, how small you are, where you come from, your age, your lineage, where you live, your mailbox, where it's put up, God, where you work, where you don't work, what you like, what you don't like, what color you are. God it said not one of those things in there today. He wants you today. People, all shapes and sizes. Blonde-headed, no hair, it makes no difference. Black-headed, with full head of hair, it makes no, never mind. I want that to be clear today. But it is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to the light through the gospel. So at this moment, it'd be a good time that we all just pause for a second. Not a moment of silence. That's not what I'm talking about. Just pause in this and say, well, what would God want me to do? What would God want me to do? If what you're saying is so, Benny, or preacher, or ever what you, ever how it is. What, if you're reading God's Word and you're reading that, what, so what would God want me to do today? I'm glad you asked that question. Well, number one, if you're asking that question, you've never accepted him. Today, the Bible throughout all eternity, and even our, uh, even our blessed country, tells us you make a decision right now. You don't know. We got, we, time is at hand. You know, we got, uh, we got all kind of grocery stores and everything else. You can get things at a moment's notice. You've got... Uh, They'll tell you when the packages is coming, They'll give you a date and time when it should be. If anything goes wrong, here's your receipt. All kinds of stuff for, to predict how soon you can get something. Well, you know, God's already done that. He said today is the day. It's an appointed time. An appointed unto men wants to die. We have, he said, take no thought for tomorrow. Let tomorrow take thought for itself. Have you thought about today whether you be, where your eternal home would be? Saved or lost today? And if you're saved, how will you be greeted when you get there? Do you have something that you might want to uh, uh, lay at his feet, say to him? What, 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 what's your plan? What's your thoughts about that? Have you even considered that today? But I want, I'm, I'm going to move on real quickly. i got five things that I want to share with you that's on my heart. Is that question that I just said, well, what does God want me to do? First, be saved. Otherwise, you, the rest won't matter. For the only thing that you'll, will be said in God's presence is to depart from me, for I never knew you, you, never, you, you workers of iniquity. That's all that will be said in His presence unless you've accepted Him as your Savior. 
But if you're here in your state today and you are concerned, you're breathing his air, and you want to be right with him, let's be a blessing. That's what God asks you to do. To go into all the world and preach the gospel. When you go into somebody else's house, you just don't go in there and start blasting them and tell them, well, do it such as you won't be heard. Christ was a gentleman when he met the lady at the well. When he met the maniac at Gardea, he didn't just go in there with his finger pointed. Now, he could if he wanted, but he did not. He went in there to present himself in the right, respectful way. I, and, and listen, he did, I'm not saying, don't, don't get in your mind when I say in the right, respectful, three-piece suit type. He, he didn't have none of that. He didn't even have a place to lay his head. He went in there just as a person, Miss Phyllis. He went in there as a gentleman. He went in there and said, you know, his aim, most of the time, people came to him. There was something about him that drew them to him. And then when they came to him, they had something, he had something they wanted. And that's the same way for us. To present yourself in that fashion. Just to be a blessing, Miss Sherry. That's all it is. To have a smile that might be on your face. A look about you that's not angry or that you're ready to tear somebody's head off. I understand you got bad days and bad moments. But those things should come and go. But to be a blessing. You with me? Number one this morning. We should be a blessing in such, in such a fashion that it will point and direct others to know God. That's it. Very simple, ain't it? You can find that in John 17 and verse 3 and also in John 1 and verse 7. To know God. To know Christ. You can know that you passed from death into life. You can know that today. But he said to go into all the world. And, and so how do we do that? Have a good attitude. Attitude reflects leadership. Who lives in your heart? What's in your heart? What's in your mind? Now, I understand we all got, we walk different walks. We got many different responsibilities, priorities, and, and all grades of things like that. But God made us all different for a purpose. Because you can see and greet people that I can't or won't. And, you were, uh, and I'll see and greet people that you might see or, or won't. I guarantee you, all of you ain't talked to the same people I have this week. But I ain't talked to the same you have. Now, there might be some that uh, overlap. But for the most part, wherever you go, whatever you do, be a blessing to someone else. Why? For God has given you a, a new day. God's given you a new breath. A new heartbeat. New abilities. Another day. Let the past stay in the past. Move forward. Look toward God. Set your affections on things above. That's what he said. Not what's behind us. Not, not, not what happened yesterday or even 10 years ago. Set your affections on things above. Let's be a blessing. And point others to know God. To point others to know God. Number two this morning, let's be a blessing to help others uh, that they might know what? God's love this morning. Well, that's how it works, Miss Fields. Because they sometimes you see people, ah, they, are, they are in my stuff. <laughs> they are just make me grit my teeth for whatever reason. If they said something to you, if they didn't do what they supposed to do, and it affects you. And you maybe you just want to look at them and tell them, you kiss my grits or whatever. I mean, I don't know how it affects you, but it stirs me up sometimes. But it's our job, truthfully. God left us here. If it was just about being saved, he'd have saved us, brother Mike, and then that'd been, that'd been it. Been over with. But that ain't what he did. He left us here to go into all the world, to share others, to show others that Christian people do have problems, and this is how you should take care of them. That's what we're left here for. Is that right? Let's be a blessing and help others know God. Let's be a blessing and help others know God's love. You can find that one, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It wasn't just with words. It wasn't just with look who I am, here I am. He didn't do that. God gave his, the most prized possession he had for us all. The whole wide world. Those on the other side and those right here in Windy Gap. Those in California and those up in Maine. 
Those down in Texas and those up in Cal uh, uh, Canada, those in England and those in India. He gave his only begotten son for the whole wide world. And it's our job to tell them, and it's our job to show, it's our job to show them. Just be a blessing. Not stand out front behind a picket line. Be a blessing. To walk with God. That when they see you, they they something different about him. Or they something different about her. Number three today. Let's be a blessing. And show others. Now listen to me. The Christian people are your friends. They've been some people I don't want to be friends with. Now. I'm with you. There's also that verse that says to love your neighbor as yourself. It also says you will reap what you sow. <laughs> like them, love them, you've got to be nice to them. You with me? Jonah tried that, remember? Don't forget. He left the presence thereof, paid the fare thereof, and left the presence of God. When he did, he swallowed by a well. And in the belly of hell cried out. He repented, got right with God, and God said, well, Don't worry, son, you're still going to go down there. I know they hate you. I know they've killed your family for ever how many years. I know they don't like you. But it's not about you. You're going to go tell them about me. And one of the biggest revival evangelists to ever walk this planet, the whole place got right with God because he showed them what? God's love. Is that right, Miss Phil? Because I don't have enough to go around, but God does. But God didn't ask you to go, to be everywhere. He just asked you, Clay, do your part. Let me, and Mike, do your part. Miss Maddie, you do your part. And if we all do our parts, all of God's parts will and can get done. That's all he wants. You. He wants you. He wants your heart. He wants your thoughts. To be a blessing to others. Be a blessing and show others how to, to know God. Be a blessing and show others the love of God, not your love. You may not have no love for them. Maybe that's what you're telling me in your mind right now. But God didn't say go show them your love. He said go show them your love for Christ. That's how that works. How much that God loves them. You're there because you care about them. Why? Because God cares about them. Matthew tells us when you've given them the least of these, you've given unto me. Number four. Number three, let's be a blessing and let this world know that Christians do care. And they should because we're supposed to be Christ-like. You with me today? Number four this morning. Let's, let's be a blessing and let this world know and show this world that God's got a will for your life and that you're interested in doing it. Because God's got something He wants you to do and you want to do it. That you do it with all your heart. He said do all things without murmuring and complaining. Now that is a tall order. Is it not? <laughs> it might be a bit tall order to get up. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you, when you get married, you get up. That's the first thing it is. I want to tell one on my daddy in law. He said, I got up. She didn't say, How are you? Did you sleep good? Good morning. She said, She looked at me and said, Get your feet off my rug. <laughs> he had his shoes on. He'd been outside somewhere. Come back. She said, Get your feet off my rug. <laughs> It's good to laugh, but I'm being serious today. To love the Lord and show. <laughs> you understand what I'm telling you? To be a blessing, to show others God's love. To show others God's love. So this was the thing I said, so what did you do? What did you say? Now, of course, they've been married long, and I've been alive. <laughs> He said, I didn't say a word. He said, I just stood up. He said, I looked at Willie Grace and said, I'll see you later. <laughs> Walked out the door. <laughs> well, you take it however you want to. Next time you see him, you aggravate him about it. <laughs> well, I did. 
Maybe he's waiting for his moment. I don't know. Maybe he's got ammunition. <laughs> I have no idea. But serious today. Be a blessing to others. Let others know that there is a God. That God, there is a God that's got love for this whole world, for everybody in it. Remember what he said about us? But God commanded his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hey, Mike, we wasn't right with him. He didn't like what we were doing. He didn't like everything about us. But he sure did love us, and he sure did give us a son to die for us, and he gave us an opportunity to choose him today. And when God says be a blessing to others, he's asking you to share him with them so that they can have an opportunity to choose him today. Now, if they don't, that's between them and God. Number four is to let this world know, be a blessing to them, and let them know that there is a will for them and there's God's life. Remember, he said that he loved them. He washed them while the snow with his purpose and with his grace, not ours. He's got purpose for you. He's got a will for you. Are you with me today? And then number five, and I'll be done. Let's be a blessing and help others to see, let others know there is a salvation to know. There is salvation for everyone and for each one. It comes with a price, and that's Jesus Christ's life. But when he asked you, when you accepted Jesus as your Savior, and when he asked those disciples, forbade them, and went into their presence and said, Come, pick up your cross and follow me. And he's telling us the same thing. When it says pick up your cross, yes, there is going to be some times and things that we need to get rid of. Because it's no good for you. To lay aside every sin and weight which does so easily beset you and run the race that he set before you. Why? So you can be right with God. So he'll help you. So that he can have his touch, his presence, and you'll know his will for your life. He's got a purpose for you today. He's got grace for you today. Let yesterday be yesterday and choose him today. Choose him today. If you've never accepted him, choose him today. Let him be your Savior. If you need help for tomorrow or help at this moment, choose him today. Right now. Choose him right now. And say, I want to be a blessing from this moment forward. I want them to know that God lives in my heart. I want them to know that God's got love for them. And it's within me. I want them to know that I care about them. Why? Because he cares about me. You love him because he first loved you, Jesus Christ. And you care about others and you help others in this world. Why? Because somebody cared about you. And because you know he's got a will for your life. And you want to fulfill it. Why? Because you care about him. And then number five, you're concerned about letting this whole world know there is salvation. There is help. It's not my love. It's not your love. It's not my grace. It's not your grace. It's God's grace. It's God's love. You ever heard that before? Show me some love. I ain't got much for you. Yeah, that's right. But God's got love for everybody. That's what you're supposed to be showing, not your love. His love through you. Christ's love through you today. It's not about you. It's about Him. So why do you do what you do? I don't know. That's what I'm asking you today. But you have a purpose. If you can't remember, look it back up. Look at that verse. It gave no description to anybody. Anywhere, God's got a purpose for you if you'll accept Him today. Let's bow in prayer and I'll be done. Almighty God, we do thank you for another day. Thank you for this another Sunday, another Sabbath day. And Lord, help us to keep it holy. Well, this is the, your day. This is the Lord's day for us New Testament Christians. This is why we worship today. Because you rose again on, this, on the third day, this day, the first day of the week. Father in heaven, I pray today, Lord, that we take this message. We'd be concerned and we would consider, dear God, what we could do to help you be a blessing to others. Well, it's not about how we feel. It's not about how we love or how we don't love, but that you love them. That's why we do it. And because we're saved and we, you ask us to do it. 
Because we know Jonah said, Lord, I ain't interested in going down there. I don't like them. And they don't like me more than that. And Lord, we remember in your word, it was not about the love of Jonah. It was not about the love of Nineveh towards Jonah. It was about your love for them all. That was the situation. Help us to realize, even in 2021, it's not about us, but it's about you. But I pray God there's someone under the sound of my voice today that would be convicted, to be concerned about their eternal home, or that they would accept you. I ask you to forgive them of their sin and come to your heart and save you. Bless this, our church, and everyone that's here. Encourage their hearts. Encourage my heart. That we'd all draw closer to each other. And you'd be the very center of it all. That you'd be the very glue that holds us together. Lord, you'd be preeminent in our minds and our hearts at our church. Lord, but we love you and we thank you for this day. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Shady Grove, I appreciate you.